again, I um I don't record I don't record the uh, the the zoom. I only record my iPad screen here, which you guys are seeing, and then the camera in front of me, and then I put them together before I post them. Um, if you're having issues like, ah, I can't see it, I watched the video last night, I can't see the work, remember, on my website, just look at the pictures above the video and it has all the work on those pictures. I don't have my picture in picture face on them. So you can see all the work we did. So you should be able to see the work anyway if you just look through those pictures. All right, let's go through a couple uh, notes here. Uh, let's kind of review. We've been doing quadratic formula, right? That's what we've been doing the last couple days here. So I, I wanna just kind of do a quick refresher, two problems, one where Maybe you have a solution and then one where you don't. Uh, so let's let's jump in the first one. So remember, this, this is the form that you want to get all of your problems written into. Okay, that's that's a quadratic formula. Um, it's ax squared, bx, c. You just rearrange them. If they're missing any terms, you just fill in them with a zero. We talked about that yesterday. Uh, so if I gave you a problem, let's say I gave you, um, you know, 4x squared plus... 10x and we go a minus 3 we can go ahead and solve that and see kind of where the roots are for this particular problem remember roots or zeros or x-intercepts it's where the graph actually hits the x-axis um, i'm predicting on this one it'll be a decimal okay we we yesterday i was i was very uh very particular and i gave you problems that had very nice clean numbers uh today i, I want to give you some messy ones where you get some crazy numbers sometimes uh so that'll be the first two examples we're gonna do here but the quadratic formula, if, we, if I give you the formula here, here it is. It's x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. Now, that's the formula that you have to use on the worksheet today. Uh, that was the one that I gave you, what, three days ago, something like that. It's due tonight by 11.59 p.m. Uh, just submit it on Google Classroom. I don't want any papers anymore turned in. Everything's online. Just attach it when you go submit it. Um, everyone's, I think everyone's kind of figured it out. So, uh, if you're having problems viewing it, just let me know today and I'll try to get you a different version of it so you can do it. Everything will be on a separate sheet of paper. Just take a picture, attach it, or put that work in a Google doc with the picture. I don't know. I just want to see the work that you're doing. Okay. We ready to go? All right. Uh, so now when we look at this problem, which numbers are my A, B, and C's? What's that? There you go. They just go in order, right? A, B, and C. You don't even have to rearrange this problem. I didn't want to have you rearrange it. Uh, we take these numbers, not the variable, the digits, and we plug those in. So here's what we have. We have x is equal to uh, negative 10 plus or minus, whoa, plus, hmm. oh, that's odd. Can I, <laughs> can't put the plus on the top. Uh, odd. Always a questionable decision what the iPad makes. Uh, so plus or minus, and then B squared, so that's 10 squared, minus 4 times A, and then times C. And C is a negative 3. Uh, yes, the negative sign has to go with it. All right. And then this is all divided by 2 times A. A is a 4. Okay, any questions with the setup? I think everyone should. We've done enough of these the last three days. You should be okay at this by now. And maybe it's just going further, getting the decimals and trusting what your answer is. Maybe that's the tough part. Um, sometimes it, you just get thrown off by a negative sign. I had that a couple times yesterday with people in class. Uh, their negative signs were throwing them off. All right. Um, now, if we go to this next one, so we have negative 10 plus or minus. Um, now, square root, here's what we have. We have 10 squared, which is 100. Because again, it's 10 times 10. And then the 4 times 4 times 3. Um, there's two negative signs there. Negative 4 times negative 3. So this is going to end up being a positive number. And that's 16 times 3, which is what? 48? Yeah, 48. All divided by 8. All right. Questions. Like silences and nothing. If you have anything online, you guys can post in the chat or you guys can uh, just unmute yourself and talk. Okay, let's keep going here. Uh, this is where you probably need a calculator. So if you don't have one, you might want to look at your neighbors or see if you need to come borrow one. I got a couple up here. Um, we got to type in a couple numbers here. So we have negative 10 plus or minus, now the square root of 148, because that's 100 plus 48, all divided by eight. The square root of 148, that's a decimal. That's where I was kind of warning you of. Uh, we are gonna get like crazy numbers sometimes. You just have to trust what your answer is. Uh, so in my case, this is negative 10 
plus or minus, and the square root of 148 is just above the number 12. It's like 12 point something. Uh, so if I type that in the square root key, 148, um, I'm getting 12.1655. So almost 12.2, roughly. And then um, getting an eight on the bottom. So there, those are my numbers. And then the idea is that now, now that I have that, now I'm um, actually you know, doing the math here, taking negative 10 plus 12.2, and then dividing by eight, and then negative 10 minus 12 divided by eight. And so you're gonna get two crazy small numbers, that's fine, I was expecting that. I kind of warned you that today was gonna be some decimals. Uh, so let me just do some numbers here. So negative 10 plus the 12.1655, um, I'm gonna get two and then divide that thing by eight. So one of my answers is 0.27, and the other root is negative 10 um, minus uh, 12.1655. Um, um, and so that's negative 22 and divide that by eight. I'm getting negative 2.77. So these are my two answers that I'm getting. Again, trust your answers. They're going to be decimals. Sometimes you're going to get decimals on that worksheet. Sometimes you have nice, clean numbers. It's pretty random. Now, the question that I was talking about yesterday, is this problem factorable? Could I have factored this thing in the beginning to find the same roots and not wasted my time doing the quadratic formula? Yes or no? What do you think? No. Why not? Because got decimals. I got a decimal. That's absolutely right. Um, when you get down to it and you do that square root, right? Um, this number right here, I'm gonna circle it. When you get down to this part right here and you find that this square root turned out to be a decimal like you said, that's called a discriminant number. A discriminant is how you, do, how you actually decide whether it's factorable or not. And that, dis that discriminant was not a perfect clean square root. So this thing is not factorable. So this was the method you probably should have used to find the roots. And they were decimals. They were they were irrational numbers, kind of like pi. They go on forever. So, I just I'm abbreviating. You know, I'm a, I'm rounding off really quick. All right. Questions though. All right. Uh, let's do the second one here. This is the second out of four problems today. Second out of four. Um, so same thing again, we're going to do one more of these now. Um, uh, there's a special case I want to talk about on these. So let's go with, uh, let's go with, let's go with a negative eight X plus X squared plus 15. And let's put a two in front of that. I don't know if I've done a two yet. Yeah, let's go two. All right, so here's my, this is my second example. Not the Google form question of the day, but second one. Okay, and so we wanna do the quadratic formula again. Um, what's the issue with this one so far? Not in order. That's something you do need to recognize. Um, my Cal kids make colossal mistakes sometimes just doing that. Uh, so do rearrange it. So I need to put that two X squared out front, the negative eight X, and then that positive 15. Uh, that way I can figure out what my A, B, and C number is. If it's not in the right order, you will mess it up. It has to be descending order when you plug them in. So doing the math here, um, X is equal to negative, negative eight. So that's the opposite of B. So when you do a negative, negative eight, the idea is that that turns out to be a positive eight because negative, negative, it's the opposite of B. That's how you want to think of it. So. The opposite of b, so that's the opposite of negative eight, which is positive eight, plus or minus the square root negative eight squared, which that will also turn positive. Do you put the parentheses around it? And that that was another thing that somebody was struggling on yesterday was it was it was not struggling, just a simple mistake. They forgot to put the parentheses around it, so they're getting a negative number when they took the square root um, or took the square. Square turns positive. Now um, minus four times a times c. And then this is all divided by two times a, and that's basically two times two. All right, questions on the setup. This is the last one, I promise you. This is the last quadratic formula I'm gonna be giving you today. 
Okay, so if we do the math here, we're gonna get, you know, um, eight plus or minus square root, uh, that's 64, and then minus, uh, four times two is eight, eight times 15, uh, eight times 15, what is that? Um, is that 120? Eight times 15? 120. All divided by four. What's the issue gonna be on this one? Negative square root. This one doesn't have roots. It didn't actually hit the x-axis anywhere. Um, it was, the bowl was facing up, it was. It was hitting, you know, 15 on the x-axis. Uh, but what gives this thing away is the discriminant number, like I was talking about earlier. This turns out to be negative. The radical does. You can't take square roots of negative numbers. It doesn't happen, you can't do it. Uh, there is no roots on this problem. So that, I, I don't need to go further. I can just say they're imaginary. It doesn't actually hit, I can stop there. I can see the writing on the wall on that one. Well, because you can't take a square root of a negative. You can't figure out what number multiplies on itself exactly to give you a negative number. It doesn't happen. They either both have to be negative or both have to be positive. You want to get a negative number out of it. So, yeah, I'm imaginary. And again, the reason why is because if you look at the graph, I'm hitting positive 15 on the y-axis. That's my y-intercept. And this thing is it's doing something like this where, you know, I'm just ballparking. Um, it's going up. It's, it's not even hitting the x-axis anywhere. That's why it's imaginary. It's too high up in the air for the curve. All right, questions. Perfect, all right. Third example, new stuff today, brand new. I'm gonna introduce it today. Um, so for those who are online, uh, do the best you can, maybe ask a lot of questions here. Um, if you are here present, um, you know, uh, do the best you can to get notes down because Monday I won't see you here. Uh, you guys will be the distant learners. The other the people that are online will be here present. So you guys will have to kind of figure it out, you know, online as we do it Monday as well. So hopefully this today is your day where you can actually figure it out. All right. So let's go through a quick example here. So this is the third example, not the Google form question yet. Um, I just wanted to talk about just kind of a simple problem here. So let's go with something like... Um, Let's go with something like x squared plus 4x plus 3. This is a new problem. I want to explain what we're doing here. The goal in this problem is to still figure out the roots. That is still the goal, right? What are the roots of this problem? Um, you know, x-intercepts, what do you want to call them, or zeros, um, however you want to say it, right? Um, that's still the goal. We have a new method. New method. Um, this method requires a couple different things for, um, that you know how to do. Number one, do you know how to take square roots? Where you take a square root to the, you know, of a certain number, or you type it in the calculator, okay? So we've done that, right? You've been doing it on the last couple problems. You should know square roots, or at least how to type them in. Second, it, it requires that you really understand how to balance equations in like Algebra 1 class. How you can add numbers together, multiply, divide, you know, uh, subtract where you are, um, you're solving equations the, the, the basic way, where you add to both sides, subtract to both sides, that type of thing. All right, uh, now this method, because I really haven't named it yet, uh, the method that we're talking about is called completing the square. I'm hoping that you've seen this in Algebra 2 class. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. If you haven't, I'm going to assume that you haven't. Uh, just to be safe. Um, it's a very simple method. It's a different method in case you don't like the quadratic formula. Now, I've obviously beaten the quadratic formula into you, so you probably know it by heart now, uh, but this is a different method. It works nonetheless. It works the same. It just requires a simple process of solving equations. So solving, you know, balancing equations out. So this, this actually might be a preferred method for you. I don't know. Okay, so let's let's walk through the process. Here's how you do it. Um, you have to set this thing equal to zero. So start with that, set it equal to zero. We have to have a zero on the one side. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for x. Now there's this process we do called completing the square where it's very simple rules. So I'm gonna try to write out the rules as we go here. So we're gonna do two of these. So this will be the first one. Okay, so first you gotta have it set equal to zero. So set equal 
to zero. So that's step one. Okay, step two, you want to move constants to the right. So any constant number that you have, you want to get rid of it. Dump it on the right side. Okay, so uh, what is my constant on my equation? Three. What happens if I dump it across the other side of the equal sign? Becomes negative. becomes negative. So here's what we have. We have x squared plus 4x, and that becomes a negative 3 on the other side. And notice I left a space. If you want to leave a pretty big space, that's actually preferred. Leave a pretty good space after the 4. Imagine the 3 was still there, so you want to give a little bit of spacing. Okay, do we understand step 2? Step 3. This is the hardest rule that I want to explain to you, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write the rule, and then I'm going to try to uh, do the best I can to show you what I mean. You're going to take half the middle and square it. Half the middle, and you're going to square that number, square it. So what I mean by middle, do you agree that this original problem was a trinomial, the original thing at the very top? It was a trinomial. Three items. What was the middle item? 4x. Four. Four we have to square the 4. So you're going to take half half of it and then square it. So what is half of 4? Two. 2. And now square it. Four. Back to 4 again. Does that make sense? Half of that middle number, squaring it. So half of it is 2. We square it which is 4, and we're going to magically add that to both sides. In fact, I'm going to use different colors. Just so you can see, we are making this number up. This number is being made up. Now, why I can do this? This is a property of equality from algebra class. You can add or subtract numbers to both sides. You can make up any number you want and add it to both sides, or subtract it to both sides, or multiply. That's called a property of equality. We kept the equation balanced, right? But we're making this number in such a way that it makes this math we're about to do work perfectly. So that's why you have to take half the middle and square it. So whatever that middle number is. Even if it's like a, let's say it was an odd number, like 9. You'll take half of 9 and then square that number. So I'll show you that. That'll be the ones we do on Monday. We'll do like weird odd numbers. All right, now, the next rule you're going to do is you are going to, this is the fourth rule now, you are going to factor the left side. So this still requires that you know how to factor trinomials apart. Now what will happen here is that these will be, um, if you did this correctly, um, when you factor this left side, you'll actually make, you'll actually make a um, the same parenthesis on each on each part, the parentheses will be identical to each other, which is kind of odd. It works the it works this way every single time you do this rule. So uh, when you do a trinomial, you know you break up the x first. What are the signs going to be? Yeah, both pluses, right? Because they're the same. They're both plus signs, right? And then how do you break up the back number? Two and two. That makes the four in the back. Makes the four in the middle. So um, do you notice that they're the same parentheses? That will happen every time. Here's my shortcut for you, and this is something we'll talk more on Monday. It will the number that you have in the parentheses will always be half the middle. So the middle number was four, right? It will always be half of that in both spots, two and two. So if that number was a nine, it'll be four and a half, four and a half. If it was a ten, it would be five and five. It will always be half the middle in both parentheses. Um, and then so I'm gonna rewrite that parentheses like this. Does that make sense, the math I just did there? You have two parentheses that match. This is called a, uh, this is not really a step, it's just the definition of a, of a exponent, right? Things that are multiplied together, if they're the same, you can just put an exponent. It's a definition of an exponent, okay? All right, so now we have to solve. So we have to, what we're gonna do is from this point, number, so this is step five, now we're going to just solve for x, and that is a very vague step because you have a lot of stuff you have to do to solve. You have to think about this logically. You have to do some correct Algebra 1 steps. Um, maybe Algebra 2. It's more Algebra 2 than Algebra 1. 
Okay, we ready to solve this thing. It's the final fifth step. So how you solve is you have to do uh, the order of operations. So the order of operations says you have to do, you know, parentheses, exponents, add, subtract, multiply, divide, that type of thing, right? Um, so I need to get rid of this power of two first because I, I need to solve for x. How do you get rid of a power of two? What is the opposite of a square? Square root. So we're gonna take the square root to the other side. Technically what I'm doing is I'm taking the square root of both sides. That's what, is, that's what I'm technically doing. And when you take it to the other side, you have to have a plus or minus because square roots have two numbers. It could be positive or negative. I can't predict which number it will be. And then how do we get rid of the two in right beside the x? You subtract it over, right? You're still balancing the equation. I'm te technically still subtracting x from both sides. This is your answer. This is the solution. These are the roots. Now, here's the thing. You actually do know what the square root of one is. Square root of one is one. And so I actually have both answers here. So my roots on this problem, it's negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. And if I did negative 2 minus 1, that's what, negative 3? These are my roots on my problem, if I actually typed them out. So this is, again, this is the third problem we did. Now, I want you to think about this, OK? I made this problem up in such a way that it worked out nice and pretty. Usually they work out to be decimals because the square root won't be pretty. But here's what I want you to think about. On this particular problem, I didn't need to do all those steps. Because the original problem at the very top was factorable. If you saw the original problem, I could have just factored it apart. It was x and x, plus and plus. You break up 3 to be 3 and 1, and that makes the 4 in the middle. And so, yeah, the roots are negative 1 and negative 3. Now you're thinking, Ward, why, why do you teach this little step? This step works. It works on every type of radical. It will work, or any type of quadratic, quadratic, mind you. It will work on any type, and so you can solve it. In fact, it will actually work on any other type, a quartic and stuff like that, um, as long as you know the math that's behind it. Uh, but it does, I'm actually proving that it did, did actually work. It gives you the right answers. All right, let's do another one. Let's do one more. And this will be my last problem of the day. This is what everyone, including the people online, are waiting for. The fourth problem, the Google question of the day. Here it is. Um, x, x squared plus, um, let's go with, I don't know, let's go with like 6x plus 2. This problem is not factorable now. So it's not factorable. So we will have to do this method on this particular problem. So the steps. Number one, is it equal to zero? Yes, it is. Step two, we have to move the constant to the other side, right? So we have to move this two over. So that becomes a negative two. So that was step two. Step three, half the middle and we have to square it. What's half the middle term? Nine. Okay, you, you took half the middle, which is three, and you squared it, which is nine. I agree with that. So that's the number we're magically making up, right? We're magically making up this nine number, and we're adding it to both sides. Again, how I came up with that number. It's half the middle. Half the middle was, this, the, number, the middle number was six. I took half of it, and then squared that. And that's the number you magically add to both sides. It's a way of creating this thing in such a way that it will work. So now this thing is factorable, this left side. The right side I don't really care about. But the left side is factorable. What are the factors? Yeah, it'll be x and x, 3 and 3, and then what are the signs? Plus and plus. So this ends up being x plus 3 squared and a 7 on the other side. And then how do we solve that? Okay, good. Take the square root of the 7. So it's plus or minus square root 7. And then what? Subtract 3. So final answer here, what we're, we're, we're going to get, we're going to get 
Uh, x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 7 because I had to subtract the 3 to the other side. And notice I put it in the front. I don't like to put it behind the radical. It looks like it's in the radical, so I'll put it in the front. Now, square root of 7 on a calculator because you're probably wondering, what do we type in the Google? What do we type in that Google Classroom question? Well, I have to do the square root of 7. Square root of 7 is 2.64, roughly. So we have to add these numbers together and subtract them together. So if I take negative 3 and I add 2.64, I get negative 0.36. There's one of your answers. And if I took negative 3 and I subtracted 2.64, I get negative 5.64. These are the numbers I want to see in your Google Form question. Okay, that's it for today. So if you're online and you got those written down, you can enter them in Google question of the day. We're done. Remember, homework's due tonight, so you guys can check out. You can log out. For those who are here, remember, homework's due tonight by 11.59. Submit it on, on the Google Classroom. I don't want any physical copies anymore. Make sure you attach the picture of it. Next week, um, you guys will be online Monday, and then the other class that was here will be physically in person, and so on and so forth. We'll continue that. So. Did anybody else think you were going to yesterday? Was I was? I don't know. I thought you were going to I was quiet? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Did you just say on your computer you can turn up the volume? I did. I still couldn't hear him. I could put your hoods in. It was amazing. I think you did. 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 I think